Hello everyone, and in this video, we're going to be talking about how does a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug like ibuprofen work. And so if you've ever gotten like a bug bite, you'll note that it usually gets pretty swollen afterwards. It'll feel red. It'll be a little bit hotter than the other surrounding tissue. Uh, it might have some pain or some itchiness. And so this is because of your inflammatory response. And this is caused by, in part, the arachidonic acid that's present inside of your cell membrane. So every single one of your cells has this plasma membrane. It's got a phospholipid bilayer. It's a pretty fatty layer on the inside. And so inside of this, you've got arachidonic acid. And so when that bug bit you and it punctured through all those cell membranes, uh, what happens is that that arachidonic acid that's inside is going to get secreted and released into the environment. And as it does, it's going to be metabolized into these things called cyclooxygenases. And so these things, they're abbreviated COX-1 and COX-2. And so these molecules are basically gonna go around and they're going to tell a bunch of immune cells, your innate immune cells, that we gotta scale up an immune response here because we've got a problem, like we just got bit by a bug. And so with something like uh, ibuprofen, because it's that class of molecules, it's going to bind to those COX-2 uh, uh, signals and it's basically going to inhibit them so it's not going to let them tell the immune system like we've got this problem here we need to scale up a, a response and so that's how it's reducing the inflammation and so another thing I will note is like how does this reduce pain it doesn't directly reduce pain because what really is going on here with uh, the inflammation response is that you have these things called bradykinins and so bradykinins are these things that as this inflammatory response is happening, they're going to be telling the nearby sensory neurons to become a lot more active and sensitive to pain signals. And so with these bradykinins, the thing to note is that um, if you don't have as much swelling, you're not gonna have as many bradykinins in that area, consequently, you're not gonna feel as much pain. And then a final note I'll make on this is that when we're talking about anti-inflammatory stuff, there are other things at play here besides the arachidonic acid and its uh, subsequent uh, molecules like the COX-1 and the COX-2 we've been talking about. And so one thing to note are these things called leukotrienes. And so leukotrienes come from a, a completely different area. And so something like ibuprofen will have no effect on reducing or inhibiting the effect of these leukotrienes. So someone who's having anaphylactic shock or someone who's having an asthma attack because they've got elevated levels of those leukotrienes, taking uh, ibuprofen or some NSAID isn't gonna help because that's not going to be able to have any effect on those types of molecules. And a thing, final, final thing to note here with NSAIDs is that they do have side effects. Um, they are getting better at reducing the side effects, but the reason that they have side effects is because that COX-2 target molecule that they have that was from arachidonic acid, with those specific um, inhibitors, they're basically trying to grab onto those COX-2 molecules or those COX-2 receptors in your body. And so the issue is that um, those things are not perfect and they're not just going to latch onto their targets, they're going to latch onto other things. And so this is the reason why things like ibuprofen will have side effects besides just the anti-inflammatory uh, desired effect. And so I'm going to wrap things up with that. Thank you all for watching. Hope everyone out there is doing well and I'll talk to you guys next time.